Um, what I'd like to do is to show you some sort of more modern, how do we amplify the means? And this is a gorgeous um, um, example. This is uh, available on um, the TED Talks. Um, here's an individual who's like Matthew. This is a grown-up Matthew. He has a very little physical capacity to move. And he, too, was misjudged as being profoundly retarded because he didn't have many means. Um, and the, this is the MIT Media Lab. Um, wanted to try out how can they make music more accessible. And he was like the worst case scenario. He's a guy who can hardly move. How could they make music, and in particular composition and playing music, accessible to one who has very little movement? You'll see he has head movement. He has a little bit more movement than Matthew. But uh, watch what happens. You'll hear, you'll see um, uh, the MIT professor come out and um, then a graduate student. And I want you to hear the graduate student talking uh, about this guy. So he's a, a guy who's been growing up in an institution. Um, and again, would have been presumed to be profoundly retarded. And uh, among other things, the question was, can he make music? Not just listen to music, can he make music? If you're going to make personal opera, what about a personal instrument? Everything I've shown you so far, whether it's a hyper cello for Yo-Yo Ma or a squeezy toy for a child. I'm sorry, I have a bigger version. I want to give the bigger version. If you're going to make personal opera, what about a personal instrument? Everything I've shown you so far, whether it's a hyper cello for Yo-Yo Ma or a squeezy toy for a child, the instruments stay the same and are valuable for a certain class of person, a virtuoso, a child. Um, but what if I could make an instrument that could be adapted to the way I personally behave, to the way my hands work, to what I do very skillfully, perhaps to what I don't do so skillfully. I think this is the future of interfaces, the future of, of music, the future of instruments. This is a grad um, student. So Todd and I entered into a discussion following the Tewksbury work, and it was really about how Dan is an expressive person. He's an intelligent, creative person. And it's in his face, it's in his breathing, it's in his eyes. How come he can't perform one of his pieces of music? I just want you to listen to how he frames this. He's not a UDL guy, but this is a beautiful UDL expression of how it is we begin to work. And I want to start here. We're going to go to executive functions last. But I wanted to talk about this is the hardest case, a person who can't move. But listen to how he reframes, instead of the old way of seeing it, he's saying, I see that there's a potential for expression in there. I've got to find out what he can do. Then I can make things that are right. Not what's wrong with him. Let's get blah, blah, blah. Watch. Oh. Sorry, it's hard for me to grab this. I apologize. If you're going to make personal, what about a personal instrument? Everything I've shown you so far, whether it's a hyper cello for Yo-Yo Ma, or it's hard for me to grab this uh, little bar when I'm watching up here. Do you know, do our technologies allow us to express? Do they provide structure for us to do that? And you know, that's a personal relationship to expression um, that is lacking in the technological sphere. So you know, with them, we need a new design process, a new engineering process to sort of discover his movement and his path to expression that allow him to perform. So, so start with him. What can he it's do? He's going to by this camera, analyze his movements. It's going to let Dan bring out all the different aspects of his music that he wants to. OK, so first start with what he can do. What's when his strength? When music, his motions are very purposeful, very precise, very disciplined, and they're also very beautiful. So in hearing this piece, as I mentioned before, the most important thing is the music's great, and it'll show you who Dan is. He's using the head switch. He composed it as well as performing it.
look how smart he looks now. Okay, it'll be available, you can listen to the whole piece. So I want to be clear what's happened. He composes the piece, and now he's playing it. All with that head switch, okay? And some of you are aware of these amazing things. But, I, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead a little part, it went too fast there. But um, they showed him a little bit earlier, and he looks incredibly profoundly retarded. He seems not to have, um, control of anything, he doesn't seem um, motivated, doesn't seem to be in the conversation. And then you could see when he's doing that music, he's riveted and he looks smart, and he looks powerful and he does this great thing and of course they all have a standing ovation, they all cry at the end and stuff and it's amazing. Okay, so what they've done is changed the way that you make music and uh, this is the composition instrument he uses and instead of using notes, paper, things he can't use, um, they turned it into a beautiful, much multimedia construction kind of environment. And uh, these are making notes literally with um, images of notes. And this is him saying what he wanted the music to do. These are just uh, notes held out, but they're not notes in the same way, the traditional way. He's not making notes on a staff. He's composing in a new way. And um, probably you know the end of this story. The, ki the kind of thing that's happening here, this kind of ability to compose is now, of course, being picked up in the, uh, much more broadly. But this work is what led to Guitar Hero and things like that. It was really starting to get into how do you make music when a lot of support is going to be provided by the environment. So Guitar Hero and what's the second one, Rock Band, all of these things come out of Makeover's work. But he did what we do in UDL, which is start with the hard cases. And how do we make it so that anyone can make music? Then even you can make music. It's fabulous. Um, and so here's a guy who had um, very few means, and uh, the computer can give him lots of means. So his up here, we're looking in his case at providing options for physical action. It's not that he can't think of music. It's not that he doesn't have even music ability. He's fabulous at it. What he doesn't have is the physical ability. So that we can uh, vary the methods of response and navigation. He uses this instead. Um, and he uses his assistive technologies uh, to be able to access the computer. Okay. Um,